I'd like to thank the chairman and ranking members and all the staff for their work on this very important issue. Um, during last Congress's consideration of the Customer Protection and End User Relief Act, this identical amendment passed by voice vote, and thanks to both, both Congressman Gibson and Vargas for co-sponsoring that amendment, it was the only bipartisan amendment we considered. This amendment simply states that a court shall affirm that the CFTC's assessment of the costs and benefits of a rule. This would have the practical impact of limiting the ability of individuals and firms to challenge the CFTC in court in an attempt to stop a rule from being implemented based on the cost-benefit analysis. The amendment provides for an exception in the case of an abuse of discretion by the Commission. If no such abuse occurs, a court must uphold the CFTC's assessment. At a time when the CFTC is still implementing a litany of critical rules, including a number of rules required by Dodd-Frank, we should not be inhibiting the CFTC's progress and adding to their workload, especially when the agency is already struggling with insufficient resources for the task at hand. To be clear, the CFTC is already required to consider the costs and benefits of its actions and regulations. It just does not provide a formal analysis of the costs and benefits. If we are going to mandate that the CFTC provide a formal cost-benefit analysis when developing regulations, which can be incredibly time-consuming and burdensome, we should trust their analysis and not let rules get tied up in costly and time-consuming litigation. We should defer to the experts here. Why go through a rigorous process like a cost-benefit analysis and expend time and resources if the end result can just be derailed by a lawsuit filed at the 11th hour? I firmly believe this is a small but important improvement to the bill, and I urge my colleagues to support the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Mr. Your ladies are back. Uh, Mr. Scott, uh, David. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I support the Dalbany Amendment. It is a very good amendment. She's worked on it. Uh, it passed uh, on, the, on the floor um, in the last session and certainly addresses our point in the avoidance of unnecessary lawsuits. I think it adds clarity, transparency, and a good guidance for the CFTC. And I recommend uh, passage of this amendment. Thank you. Chairman yields back. The chair intends to support the amendment. Are there others who want to be heard on the gentlelady from Washington's amendment? Seeing none, the questions on the amendment from the gentlelady from Washington. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Paying the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is adopted. Mr. Goodlatte, you're recognized for an amendment. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, and I commend you for the Commodity End User Relief Act of 2015 before us today to foster a transparent, balanced, and functional marketplace. And I also appreciate the attention that you and Commodity Exchanges Subcommittee Chairman Austin Scott, as well as others on the committee, uh, have paid to relating to the amendment that I am offering to seek to ensure that markets operate in an orderly manner. So I, I have an amendment at the desk. I, I think they're distributing amendment. So I proceed with my explanation. Yeah, sorry, yes. The right amendment right. encourages the efforts of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission to continue to review the relationship of long queues for the delivery of aluminum at warehouses to the pricing of aluminum and how those issues impact market integrity and market participants. This uncertainty in the market means higher prices for families and businesses across America. The amendment seeks to prevent the unreasonable delay of delivery of such commodities, which can cost end user companies with increased storage fees, potentially higher prices due to supply and demand implications, and result in uneconomic commodity prices. The persistence of long disruptive market queues for the delivery of aluminum at warehouses in this country licensed overseas has attracted considerable concern for end users and consumers of products which many Americans utilize on a daily basis. Even the Senate Select Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations issued a bipartisan report last year that raised significant concerns regarding aluminum market price practices. Chairman Massad testified before this committee on February 12, quote, an issue of concern we are focused on pertains to the long queues for the delivery of aluminum at warehouses in this country licensed by the London Metal Exchange. The relationship of those queues to the pricing and delivery of aluminum and how these issues impact market integrity and market participants. Toward that end, I commend the CFTC's recent oversight actions as the CFTC noted 
that while progress has been made, the results attained to date indicate that more progress is needed. Specifically, my amendment directs the Commodity Futures Trading Commission within 90 days of enactment to report to Congress regarding the ongoing review of foreign Board of Trade applications for metals exchanges and the status of its negotiations with foreign regulators regarding aluminum warehousing. Such status reports shall inform the CFTC in deter determining foreign boards of trade status for metals exchange applications and such metals exchange foreign board of trade determination shall be made no later than September 30 of next year. The, the amendment carries endorsements from the American Beverage Association, the Aluminum Users Group, and many others, and I urge its adoption in, to promote efficiency, competition, and economic growth in the marketplace. And I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman yields back. Are there others who want to be heard on the uh, gentleman's amendment? Chair intends to support it. Uh, Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Newhouse for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for yielding. Um, I'd like to add my support to this amendment for its intention to resolve serious distortions currently present in our nation's aluminum market. For quite some time, end users who rely on aluminum for building cars, air aircraft, canning, and other purposes have been unable to access the aluminum they purchased in a timely fashion. Delivery times have taken months, sometimes years, when standard delivery times for other commodities take mere days. The re resulting aluminum shortage has led to significant distortions in aluminum prices, driving up costs for Americans who purchase these products. This amendment would give the CFTC the tools needed to hold foreign exchanges accountable and ensure fair, timely delivery to the end users. And I thank Chairman Goodlatte for his hard work on this issue, and I look forward to supporting the amendment. I yield back my time. Thank you. Jim yields back. Are there others who want to be heard of this amendment? Uh, Ms. Walorski from Indiana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I appreciate the intent of the amendment, and I'm voting no, but um, I think that we just need to be really sure. I think there, um, there needs to be very uh, good due diligence on our side, and as, as the committee, that, um, that there is complete fairness and transparency and openness when we talk about studies and we talk about reviews. Um, I just think that uh, there just needs to be a great amount of due diligence of the, of the folks that are involved in this review. So um, I would appreciate that. And